Travis Scott, Travis Scott. We know you guys. Look at that. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Who are we missing? Go Sean. Ahead. Sam. Oh, perfect, perfect. Sean's so scared of uh, lifts, he's scared of elevators, so he took stairs and stayed. It's true, it's true story. Well, welcome to Knoxville! Welcome! Alright, let's open this directly up. I have all our questioners lined up against the wall, and I'm going to bring them up, and they get to talk to you, get to answer the questions, and fill them in on their amazing dreams they've had. Especially about you. Like, you've, they've been telling some naughty stuff. That one right there. Right there. Yeah, you. You know what I'm talking about. Alright, let's start this out. Come on down. First question. For Billy, would you be willing to see Edge of Night right now? Yeah. <laughs> Just in the way that Sean Aston fears elevators, I fear singing in front of groups. <laughs> so if I did that, it would be like Sean Aston being stuck in an elevator for three hours. <laughs> No, um, I, I would, I genuinely would, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Next question. First off, thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time to meet everyone here. <laughs> We all know about things that happened in the movie, like when Vigo kicks the, you know, the helmet breaks his toe. Is there anything that happened on set that maybe hasn't been told to an audience that you guys can think of something interesting or a fun fact from, from set that you guys would like to share? No. <laughs> I remember one that I don't think has been told, or maybe it has, but I think it was aim on hen, and we were practicing sword fencing, me and, and Dom, and Salah was very kind and was helping us out because he's a master sword fencer and, and a stuntman and amazing at all these things. Whatever you are, you're, you're brilliant at it! And uh, he, 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 we had to wear these like hairy feet. And they were soft, and, and if you stood on a rock, it was really painful. So I didn't know, but Salah was being very kind and was getting rid of the rocks around my feet as I was kind of... And I had my sword, and I thought I'd put it into my scabbard, but I actually stabbed... <laughs> I stabbed Salah right in the head! Do you remember that? I actually do now. <laughs> As soon as you said the scabbard, I was like, oh no, here we go. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know you were there behind me, and I went, mm, oh! <laughs> yeah. So I'd like to apologize for that. I accept it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else have, uh, have an answer to that one? Alright, next question. Come on over. Let's get you up and close and personal right here. Yeah, like, he 
understanding the world through its through its food and through its culture and stuff like that. We might do haggis. I think did that answer your question? I'm not sure. Dream guest for me, because we're both different people. We are, right? Yeah, we are. <laughs> dream guest for me, we'd never get. But dream guest for me would be Lionel Messi. This is like my favorite person. Unless I don't know. By you, Bill. Probably was Miranda Otto, but she kept saying no. She wouldn't come on. <laughs> Who's, who would be your dream guest? And it would be you, because you're a brilliant actor. And I love him. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Rudy, here it is. Rudy. <laughs> well, the, ones, the little, very short. I, I did, I've never heard of Rudy. I didn't know the movie. And we were down in the South Island or something uh, filming. And I was jet lagged and going through. And it, it said, next up is a Sean Aspen film, Rudy. And I watched it and I was in tears all the way through it. And I called you Rudy for about the next three months, right? <laughs> It's, it's such a beautiful film, and, and Sean is so brilliant. Yeah, yeah. should be called Thank you. Uh, my question is: uh, so Tolkien is on the record of saying that Sam is the chief hero of the story. I want to know your guys' opinions. Do you all agree or disagree with that? Because everybody has <laughs> And if you agree, and if you agree, I want to know what you think cement Sam is the chief hero of the story. <laughs> Sorry, <that's my> <laughs> As we all know, <laughs> dwarves are filthy, small, <laughs> large creatures that should be eradicated. <laughs> and the true hero is some really annoying blonde elf <laughs> who's so much better than that Lego Watt. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go and have a sleep. Can't we just pick on the pointy ears because he isn't here? <laughs> what? That went better than I thought it would. <laughs> can you do the gritty or can you do the flops? <laughs> Can you do the gritty or can you do the floss? The dances. What's the what's the gritty can do? Show us up. Show us up. Alright. Yeah. Who else wants to be this little kid right now?
Joseph Donald do the flux. Yeah, there it is. Let's see the flux. The flux is really hard. Good job, big guy. Good job. Well, I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> well, there's going to be an insurance job there for a second. Just imagine if we got Sean on the app doing that. <laughs> So I have, Rosie and I have 13 Hobbit children. We're used to all sorts of self-expression. So good job. Baby. <laughs> all right, next question. Howdy. Welcome to Tennessee. Thanks for coming. Um, uh, for those of you who've seen the Rings of Power, what's your honest opinion of it? Oh, an idea somewhere, right? <laughs> I think anything that that amount of time and work goes into is fantastic. They told a very different world and a different story to these stories. I think they did a great job. It's... Did you get that, Jeff Bezos? Thanks very much. Get it. <laughs> Sneak in that house. That'll be forty-five dollars. Yeah. Each. And I only charge ten. <laughs> so I was gonna ask Billy to sing, but he's already done. So I'll ask Miranda. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you to sing. It's okay. Um, I'm just curious how it felt as a woman to be able to deliver one of the most powerful lines in literature for women. Awesome. I was a little nervous about it because um, Hugo, who played Elrond, said to me beforehand, like, you've got the best line in the whole trilogy. And so then that, that I, I hadn't really thought about that much before, and then I got super nervous about it. But I did that line a lot of times, so I felt like we nailed it by the end. But yeah, it was awesome. Talking about doing a line a lot of times, do you remember Ish Kakri? I... <laughs> I thought you had it on the first one. I really did. <laughs> Ish Ka... What is it? Ish Kakri... What is it? <laughs> They're all standing there grinning. <laughs> Next question. If the hobbits were put into a drinking contest, who would win? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, now, do you just be the four of us, or do you mean Andy and Ian Hull and like who are you talking about here? The four. Well, it's, it's only really a competition between me and Bill. So I mean, Sean. And no, I didn't, I'm not really in the same ballpark, really. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I would say it depends on drinking. I think Billy's probably a little better at drinking whiskey than I am, but I think I'm I would good, I? Yeah, I think I'm I'm right. Right. Yeah, probably beat me at tequila. Yeah, you beat me at tequila, yeah. So, it depends on what we're drinking, but... And Billy's, you know, 25 years older than me, so he's... <laughs> I, I feel the reminiscent sensation of defending Frodo. <laughs> He's quite a sophisticated drinker, and he, he puts away more than you realize, doesn't he? <laughs> These right. drunken little hobbits <laughs> come back from one of their nightly sallies in, in, in Christchurch with this great idea, let's have a tattoo! <laughs> 
there was a nightly occurrence. The police were uh, alerted all the time. <laughs> Next question. Uh, so, uh, so it's nice to see you all here. Um, at least, uh, there's a lot of people probably who grew up watching the trilogy and the all the Atlantic World. Don't worry, we can speak to that in a short amount of time. Sure, get a lot more people. But, and you all on the other you know, movies and voice lines and just fantastic. Uh, but a question for Billy, if I can. Um, you made a, a thing some time ago about opening. Having a gift for a game, for a game but not quite finding an opening up. Do you hear yourself? Have you done that yet? I have done. Uh, uh, it was a thing they did about gaming, and uh, all the other guys said that I was the worst gamer because they used to play games and all that. But I knew that I was brilliant deep down. <laughs> but I just hadn't quite worked it out yet. But I've worked it out now. League of Legends. <laughs> I am the greatest player who has ever played that game. So, yeah. Is it true? I think in your mind it is true. Yeah. Yeah. You, you are, I've said this right from the start, you are the most improved gamer. <laughs> yeah, that's a great compliment. The old school games, you would wipe the floor with us, Atari games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Defender, Pac Man, Galaga, I'm great. But League of Legends, <laughs> we do actually play League of Legends for hours upon hours, just sitting. And like, we have a group of people, like Nigel, who was on Lord of the Rings, Dom, we all, like, at different places in the world, and we're all playing League of Legends. It's brilliant. If you don't play it, play it. Yeah, play it, play it. <laughs> and there's a happening game of it. Well, I, I could win that as well. <laughs> I know games that I'm not good at. It's all the Lord of the Rings games. <laughs> Speaking of like, I'm the Jinx. Jinx, right? Jinx from League of Legends right there. Yeah, she's actually the next question. There are question, 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 or no? Would you rather fight 10 horse sized chickens or 50 chicken sized horses? I know. For me, it's four horse sized chickens because I'd take them down fast and that'd be good eating. Except if you did, ten, is it ten, ten horses? Chicken sized horses. Oh, right? chicken sized, no, no, definitely. With you, because you get the wings, chicken wings. That's going to be amazing. Ten horses. Huge. Like, how many wings would you like? I'd just take one. <laughs> I'm full now. Yeah, that'd be great. I didn't know she said horse at first. <laughs> horse doesn't taste as good. I was like, horse. Horse. Like, what size is that? <laughs> Horse. Horse size. Come on down. Thank you. Horse size. So my question is for the Hobbits. At the end of Return of the King, when Sam and Rosie got married, did you ask Frodo to be the best man, or was he the ring bearer? <laughs> said, come to Knoxville, it's nice. Don't ask you if Sam is the best in front of all the other people in Lord of the Rings. They won't try and take the one sacred guy and make him, like, you know, prostrate on the ground. I think Frodo was officiating. Good <laughs> the on that one. Come on down, you look amazing. Speaking of Frodo. Yep. Okay, so how much of the entire movie script was scripted and how much of it was improvised? 
was hardly any improvisation, really, was there? I mean, in terms of the, the whole it, 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 it had to be Tolkien's text as much as possible, because the fan base recognizes the absence of text. Uh, as you know from the, uh, the, the spring set of sequel that they did. <laughs> It's a different, it's a different story. It's a different world. It's a different author. Um, we really did have to stick pretty close to the story, though there were a few improvisations, I do believe. Well, they, yeah. they, we had when they sent the script. When they sent the script the first time. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You can hear me. <laughs> when they what? sent the script the first time, and, and the. the the person brought it into the house, he set it, up, set it on the table and it went... And they, they were really thick and every page had my name watermarked on it, you know, Sean Aston, Sean Aston, Sean I, could, I almost couldn't tell what other worlds there were, it was like I was on top of every world. And then, throughout the entire film, every single day, they would publish new pages. They would arrive at like 3 o'clock in the morning and slip down to your hotel room door. Yeah, and for the first year, you know, every actor knows when you get additional pages, you open your binder and you put it in there, and it's it's all kind of a living process. And, but this one, we I have probably ten full boxes of script pages, and I have no idea if we filmed any of them or not. I, <laughs> well, I, and in terms of improvisation, I think there are something like eleven million or some like a million feet of film, actual film, before digital was happening, that ran through the cameras. And I think there are dozens of hours of improv uh, improvised things that didn't get shown anywhere. <laughs> Going back to what, they, what John said, what's on the page. But you always knew that there would, it, you'd see it in the first cut if we heard Peter Jackson giggle. <laughs> I think that Apple, like an improvised thing that actually did make it in, the, the the whole second breakfast conversation that we have, and then it ends with Aragorn pulling out an apple and throwing it and it hitting Pippin on the head. I think that was something that, between myself, Pete, Billy, and Vigo, we all chatted, and again, like John said, Pete was giggling at the idea, <laughs> and we went for it. And another one, I've told this story before, but another idea that Billy and I pitched to Pete that didn't get around to being filmed, but we loved it, and Pete thought it was funny, but it just wouldn't have made it was the idea that there's a, a kind of campfire uh, kind of dying at the end of the night and Aragorn's been off into the forest to try and find some food for the hobbits as we're traveling and he comes back with a dead deer and then kind of goes up to the brow of a hill and starts singing a little song and we pitch that either Merry or Pippin approaches Aragorn while he's singing and just lets out a really slow fart. <laughs> We've got time for one last question. It's a lot of pressure. Um, so my question is mostly directed to Sean, but I was going to answer it as well. What is your favorite way to compare a potato? <laughs> Scalloped! Um, listen, you guys have this, you know, United Nations of Lord of the Rings uh, characters and performers in front of you. It's an absolute pleasure and privilege to be with you. Well, you guys. <laughs> they're, they're really mean. <laughs> uh, it's, it's amazing to be back together with our, uh, with our colleagues and have a hug and take pictures with all of you. And, and uh, the fact that maybe there are no stories left. I don't know if that's true or not, but it certainly felt true in whoever that first person asked. If there are, if there are any news stories, I'm sure there are. One of the great things about friendship is when you you're sitting and you're chit-chatting about something, something new will pop into your mind. And I, I have to say that one of the greatest parts of being a part of Lord of the Rings has been sharing everything with the fans. But sometimes it's really cool when you have a little private memory that you share with people you worked with and nobody knows about it. So I think um, people can appreciate that. So thank you all so much for your hospitality. Keep it going, ladies and gentlemen. Keep it going.